let me tell you something. Penwell is not a billionaire millionaire. You know, he is not that influential. Like just in general, uh, like seriously, uh, just in general. Ne? He's got six kids, so he's got enough baby mama drama. <laughs> Yeah, you can continue speaking. It's 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 so like my temperament in terms of like tolerating people and their moods and the different is built from my father basically left me in a house full of women the whole entire time. Do you have like, resentment? My aunts. No, I've got no resentment. My aunts were there, like my dad was like he's such a provider and you know what I mean like. What kind of man is he? Because you went with him on everything I say music. And I think he was silent. He provided the information that was asked from him about the black coffee scenario, you getting arrested. But I couldn't, I don't think that I could find out what kind of man was he from that. Like, is he assertive? Does he get upset sometimes? Mm, yeah, yo, my dad. You can have a violent temper. Yeah. But you only see it, like, at the workplace. If you go to, like, to his work sites and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I think your working. microphone is in front of your face. I may be overreacting. Okay. yeah but yeah go. yeah yeah um we so, are recording anyways we can continue so speaking. yeah so yeah that's when you see it or like you know when he's really upset about something like my dad is a guy that you know we, we feared irri- annoying and my mom would be someone who'd be like you know really violent you know <laughs> so between the two of them what who would you fear the most when you were younger? you fear your dad you you, you take the beating from your mother you yeah. know, you take it. Every time your mother would beat you, you take it. She's violent. She'd beat you all the time. But you know that you don't allow it to escalate to a point where she says, I'm going to call your father. Yeah. Because that, that dude will kill you. You were aware that his level of violence can... I, I have that too. Like, I just contain it. But you were aware that it could get to that point. Had you, have you seen him, like, confront a person verbally... Uh, an employee or even you like did he ever yeah hit yeah, you? yeah 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 i've been yo yeah like um but mostly my little brother i think <laughs> my little brother has had like terrible run-ins with my dad um um but me i had one where like he skinned my foot like he he, he pushed the door like i was taking too long to get dressed and i was trying to get dressed and he was trying to uh I get into my bedroom and I was like pushing the door so I locked the door because I had the key and I was holding the door because he was like banging on on it right and um and then he pushed the door and then like it skinned me I think he kicked the door I don't know what he did but like obviously I was on the other side and then it skinned me and then I went to school like with my foot bleeding so because my foot was bleeding and my skin was off on my foot I had to put my sock like uh around where it wasn't like uh cut yeah. like on the ankle side right so i didn't like have my sock at the bottom of my foot right so my sock like crawled up my leg under my thing so like and i arrived at school a little bit late because i was late that, that day so obviously when you arrive late you have to walk past the principal's office at my school so the principal sees me he's like hey why you only have one sock on and then I said, no, I'm going to put it on as soon as I get to class. Sorry, sir. But <laughs> inside, I was like, there's no way I can put my sock on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was in such excruciating pain, but I was like, oh, my God. Like, I can't believe this guy, like, skinned my foot. Um, but, I mean, I guess it wasn't intentional, but, like, that was an extreme like overreaction on his part yeah and then the other time i would i know i would beat the hell out of you as a kid why would you beat the you hell sound out of me like you were an annoying kid no i was never no like you sound like it no like why would some of why, the stories that you share wh- which stories have i shared that make me an annoying kid the vomiting PA the vomiting driving for example vomiting. from one one story the P- your father's worker is driving the car. No, my dad's PA. Yeah, yes, yeah. his executive assistant actually. Yeah. She whatever, she actually whatever it is like the story. She, is, no, the woman that runs my dad's business. Yes, yes. yes. So she was driving and because all my dad car. does is shout at workers. She never. And then when he's done shouting at workers, she makes sure that things get done. Sure. Yeah. So she never allowed you to go and pee or something like that. Oh, you wanted to vomit. No, I needed to vomit. I was yeah. about to vomit, sure. and I told her to yo stop the car right now. So she wanted to stop at a convenient spot. Yeah. 
but what the why is that make me an annoying kid the fact that i could tell that i was about to vomit right and i explained to my father's executive assistant that i'm about to vomit and i don't think i will be able to withhold it back in enough time for her to stop at a convenient place and she decided electively she said she'd take her chances with it right because I knew the consequences. If I vomit, I'm going to my friend's birthday party. There's no way I've got enough time to sit with her while she's cleaning the car afterwards. She's going to have to clean the car. It's a work car. You understand what I'm saying? And I was saying to avoid that because I'm going to vomit, stop right now. And she could have stopped, but she didn't. And she knew the consequences. And she, yeah. I would have, in my growing up experience, I would have calculated and known that there is a hiding coming. Or Why? No, I'm saying in my grown up lived experience as a six. But you didn't have a, a car at, at home. Time, no, I'm saying like I'm just saying just think about yeah. that. Like for you, you're 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 judging this, right? Experience. I'm expressing to my father's executive assistant. Yeah. That's a completely different life than anything you could ever imagine. Yes, for sure. For sure. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So even your your grasping of me retelling that story, you are imagining it it's as if like you know when someone's reading a book, a fairy tale yeah. book of Richie Rich, and you've never seen rich people. So you've got no imagination. So you're thinking maybe Richie Rich, like he comes from the back of an elephant that's got gold tusks in the, his backyard. You know, like it could be anything. Like the way Americans imagine what Africa could be like. You understand what I'm saying? So, you've got that so, misconception. No, besides that, in mm. that e interaction of adult to child, I know what would happen um, in an instance where that happens. What would happen to me? Like I, I'm imagining... But what would happen from, to you? Like, from, so from that interaction... You don't get what I'm saying. I'm a child, but she works for me. Yeah. Yes. That's my thing. So here's what I'm saying. You, no, so, you, so, you, you in your life experience, you've never been in a situation where you're a child and an adult actually works for you. Yes, that's that we can agree on. What I'm saying is that it, as a kid, that's why I'm saying easily I would get a hiding for that. Because as a kid... <laughs> The, the, the relationship, my employee would give me a hiding. The, the relationship between a, 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 a poor kid from the township and, an, and every adult that they interact with is that that would result in a hiding. <laughs> that they can give you a hiding. Yes. That's, that's my thing. Saying. That's what I'm saying. That's my thing. Now, my thing is that every adult that I interact either works for me or works for my dad or is in... You understand what I'm saying? So, like, even, like, something as simple as ever going into a workplace... Like, I could never, ever respect, like, people that go to a workplace. Because imagine, when I go to, to school, I'm with my dad, right? And I read the newspaper, and I'm talking about Royal Causa, you know what I mean? And so, Royal Causa is, like, my, my mom's boss, effectively, because my mom works at ESCOM at the time, you know? <laughs> and, obviously, at some point in time, they went to the same high school um, in Pushback Ridge, mm. you know? I think Bangkona or whatever. And I'm like reading about things that they're doing in the newspaper. And my dad would be like, yeah, but, you know, he works for somebody. Yeah, he's the CEO, but, you know, ESCOM is not his company. You know, just imagine like my dad, because for him, it's like I used to go to school with that guy. So it's like a competitive thing, right? Yeah. But I'm his son and I'm reading about this guy in the paper and the way he's diminishing this guy. Who's this? CEO of ESCOM. Yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And my dad is taking me to school and telling me like, yeah, but that guy, he ain't nothing. I don't know. Maybe they had something on the playground, you know, um, that happened. But either way, you know, so my perspective of such things is completely different. And this sure. is I exactly why, you know, um, when you listen to Rob Hershoff speaking and he's speaking about Cyril and like he's, like, he's giving him orders. He's, he yeah. sounds like a mastermind of something. <laughs> and I think to myself, why would you take that, infer that from him? And then I understood that, oh my goodness, no. that, 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 that is exactly how people who, if your dad's a, a boss of something. So when I, as a kid, everybody you can order around. It's, it's a very, I don't know if it, it like, for, because for me, it's like, you know, I was, I was treated well by everyone that worked for my father. Everybody loved me. Yeah, you understand. E everyone that worked for my father loved me. They loved taking care it of me. It was in their interest for them to do so. Now that we no, know what we because know. I wasn't a brat. That's yeah. the thing is that they loved when my father would say, "Yo, take care of my." Because obviously we do fun things, yes. Because <laughs> I'd want to do fun things. <laughs> and <I'd> say, <laughs> take us to have fun, yes. First, <laughs> that's the first thing we do, <laughs> and then we do whatever we need to do. And then also, 
the thing is that you know i'd be just such a respectful child you understand what i'm saying i I, you know i wouldn't be a tantrum throwing you know i'd be such a pleasant child you know what i mean um they'd love it you know they'd enjoy that so that was a good thing because you know um i think it also taught me um how even when you're in positions of power and influence and everything else you know to not be like a dick you know You can be assertive but not be a dick. Sometimes people take assertiveness as being a dick because they come from situations where they've never been in command and they've never understood how someone can be in command just in their life. I take great responsibility of that power. Because because I come from the the place where usually people work for us come Mm -hmm. from, I take great responsibility. I'm like, I'm so empathetic when I engage with them. But I know like there's a disadvantage with that because they, they can I've, ride on that. I, I've noticed that about you. Yeah. You know, I've noticed that about you. But what I've noticed is that for most people, especially people that come from your situation, and not to say it in a way because I know that we've got viewers who sure. don't understand that you understand what I'm, yeah, I mean I, by I that. Yeah, I get you. I do, your situation is not the same as my situation, right? Absolutely. People that, most of people that come from your situation that come up to where we are right now, the way they treat people from the same situation that they come from is terrible. You know, like about Marcelo Shini, all those sorts of attitudes. Like, think about this. My success in life has been because, like, even though I grew up in the burbs and everything else, I didn't look down on the township and I didn't look down on the fact that the potential for um, anyone to get anywhere in this country um, is obviously, you know, um, uh, dependent on how much of people in the township they can either relate to or sell products to you know that's it because most of our people live in those um communities so i couldn't now be snobbish or be a snob yeah you know like i'd sit with my dad's construction workers and we'd play casino i used to hate playing casino by the way because i'd always think like it's making me like a gambler because they used to play for money so when i was playing i'd be like yo we don't play for money because my dad doesn't gamble. My dad doesn't even play the lotto. So I said, if my dad doesn't gamble... It doesn't need to. <laughs> it doesn't need to. If lotto is like... If, if, if lotto's I've like, never thought of it like that, lotto's, but no, no, like, no, like, no, yeah. okay, no. Here we are. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You're gonna, no, you're no. Gonna, you're going to say what you have your say. No, no, no. Let me you're tell you what. You're going to have your say. Oh, please, please. Okay. If lotto's main idea is to sell you a dream that you're not going to get statistically because <laughs> you're always going to lose... Um, it's because you're poor and it's supposed to lift you out of poverty. I worked out the mathematics yes, with an Indian guy and we worked out that... No, you, you wait, could... wait, wait, wait. No, before you even go there. So there, there no, there, no, there's a reason why I need to tell you, wait, I know why. The thing is this. My father said then, the reason why he doesn't play the lotto, right, is because there's a 1 in 14 million chance of winning. There you go. Right? That's impossible. Then he taught me how to work that out. That's because my father's a maths genius. Shout out to you. Right? Now. Now I'm a kid. And then the, the gambling board comes to school to present to us why we shouldn't gamble and everything else. Yeah. And they ask, okay, what are the chances of winning the lotto? And guess which is the only kid that knew the answer to that in the whole entire school? It's me. Baby genius. Then I am in the hall. How many, life, you understand? how many lifetimes do you need to live in order for you to win the lottery, bro? Jeez. Yeah, understand. It's so impossible. no, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, we we did the workings out as well in primary school. Yeah. Um, but it, even besides that, like playing into the idea of a poor person and the aspirational aspect of it, you know, mm. so you understand why poor people would play. Mm. It. That's why we played we played poker because poker we knew it was a game of skill. Mm. It's 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 not gambling. Like I know, I played poker all through primary school. Like, well, through senior primary. Like, and we played serious hands of poker with a serious poker player. Like our principal, yo, yo, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. That guy was dangerous. Yeah. That guy would clean out MTN Dome, MTN Casino. You remember MTN Dome used to be a casino. Oh, He'd yeah. clean it out <laughs> during lunch break and then come to school. And then teach maths. <laughs> was he cut counting? No, no, no. But he I don't could. have any idea. He of could. Poker other he than could. Things that I, he could. Made. He wasn't, but he could. Yeah. He could. Yeah. 
because you can work out how many. Yo, yeah, he, he could. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. yeah, but I, I, yeah, I, yeah, you know. Uh, I've already you said already? I already no I've already said what my school is I, I wouldn't want to yeah, yeah for sure yeah, yeah let's you not know. dwell too much on <laughs> so um, yeah. yeah so shall we move yeah so you know uh, that's the thing about my dad uh, that's yeah. the type of person he is you know he's just the greatest do you aspire to be like him yes I told you that my grandfather told me that I need to be half the man my father is yeah. so that's why like my dad doesn't gamble I don't gamble. Yeah, how is he like regarding women? Like he's loved your mother only. Like my 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 aunts are the best judges of what type of man my dad is. My my aunts, my yeah. my mother's sisters in laws. Oh, not your mother's, not your father's. My sister. father's sisters in laws. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, my mother's sisters. Yes, and cousins and everybody else. Well, my mother's cousins and everybody else. Like, they will attest to how great my father is. Like he gets the head table. At my mother's side of the family. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you wearing a pom pom? What do they? Because call you know, I need to unprettify myself. I've been outside, outside a lot, you know. So. What does that mean? I don't understand you. I'm just saying I've been outside, like you know, going to so places. You need to unwatch yourself. Unprettify myself. What does that mean? Like I'm, I'm too pretty. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, just to the audience, I'm sorry. Gonna, no, 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 no. Let them know. Let, let, let them no, no, I'm just saying, uh, I'm, struggling, I'm struggling with flu, so... Um, let them I read into that. in advance if... Uh, you, 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 it was a perfect clip. They're going to take that clip and say... <laughs> That's when Nkuru Lego knew that, I <laughs> And I tell you, you know how they are. <laughs> Your four-year-old self is still training. <laughs> to this day, he's still training. <laughs> What yeah. are you trying to regrow the hair again? What? Nah, man, I'm just looking scruffy, you know. I tried like to not shave as well, like because mm. men, I think there are certain types of men who have to go through that. Like, ah, whatever, man, I'm making money, I'm doing the things I'm supposed to do, I'm meeting my obligations. Mm. Why do I need to cut my hair? Mm. Why no, do I need it's to just that women just want too much of your attention now when you're looking good. Is that, you yeah, understand? going back to this pretty boy thing no, no the, i'm serious like that's what i'm saying it's <laughs> like so like i like like i don't need any distractions being thrown at my way but like you need to look at it like this i'm on a freaking billboard you understand what i'm saying like expand on that i don't know what you're talking uh, what do you mean i don't i don't know what you're talking about which like billboard? you not on a billboard like you know like you know i'm on a freaking billboard like if i'm not trending month to month you know i'm being spoken about you know they treat my married life like some type of entanglement you know so <laughs> it's not as if you don't contribute to that i i mean it's not like what can i do but contribute to it because like i need to live in it you know what i mean i need to live in it and so now that level of attention it brings attention from women you understand what i'm saying so now it's they like see okay, that you are available no they in their minds they think you are available a woman don't give a damn whether you're available or not they mm. they are entitled dude i was with what's this guy uh, mansa he's doing a club hosting this other girl tells me the things you say to she comes to me in the club whatever she comes to me like a little petite little thing you understand comes to me in the club so i'm listening to her okay cool there's loud music in the thing cool so I tell her, listen, you're not going to come to me, tell me shit. She's like, I don't know, on some feminist shit. Like, but Now, after I tell her, like, yo, you're not going to tell me off in this club, number one. You know, you're violating my space. I don't know who you are and everything else, right? Then I ignore her. What does she do? She then grabs my ass, like, pinch. She's sexually <laughs> violating. So I'm like thinking to myself, so you are mad at something I said about women. So now you're going to sexually assault me. Yeah. And you feel like it's okay. You're saying that's sexual assault? <laughs> I mean, is it not? It's unambiguous, it is, but of course, sometimes from time to time a man might enjoy that. I no, think. dog! <laughs> I'm being violated! <laughs> what do you mean, bro? <laughs> Well, you must tell that's her to, the thing. Tell this her is, to grab this is my exactly, ass. This is like. the thing. I, I, now, that's the thing. Niggas are weak. They're simps. <laughs> because this girl is pretty or whatever, the guys would say, hey, man, you know, well, she's hot. You know, I'd allow her to whatever. And then you've got people trying to justify this girl who took a knife and intentionally killed somebody 
and stab them. You understand what I'm saying? So the last you've time got we men, spoke, you've got sorry, men. Let me just say this quickly. Sorry, the last time we spoke, you and I, YouTube had not clamped down on language used on content. Mm. So we usually talk 30 days apart. Mm. Now, the numbers of this episode might be affected by the language said here. Mm. We try as much as we can to bleep out words like the R word, words like I'm just saying. Like, yeah, but stabbed. Um, yeah. I never so said we, we, a, a bad word. We, we YouTube, like, I'm just yeah, saying. But to say uh, stab, yes. Clamp, yes. Clamped down like, uh, on language used. So I'm just thinking in advance that ish, usually our conversations do Don't 50, worry, 50 I, I, to 100,000. I've been watching a lot of YouTube. I, I know. <sighs> I know, I know. We, we we're about to go to we're about to go to a new platform called uh, Smug. I was actually doing a launch for it. S M U G. S M U G G. Smug, like G G. You know, like yeah, you, you know how I am. I'm always smug. <laughs> so yeah. YouTube has the best um, yeah no, distribution platform. Th- that's true. On the internet. and they've built it up. So yeah. just like Rumble has has been built up to be an alternative, we have to build up our own South African alternative because. Another thing that we need to also consider is that, you know, censorship across national lines is something that we need to be aware of. And, you know, we're giving a lot of our culture to Google right now to the point where they're even bidding to have cloud centers here. And part of these cloud centers are the reasons why the the president is sitting on the Copyright and Minimum Bill and hasn't signed it because Google are funding projects and are offering things. And this is how they lobby. They say, yes, we're going to offer your government an 18 billion investment over whatever and cloud services and whatever. Remember, you've got that bill that you need to sign. Oh, you know, so they're, you know, giving the president enough rope to hang himself so that they can line their pockets. And we've already seen how when the Internet is being controlled by certain powers, you know, so all the American powers are lining up, you know, the same way they gave Cyril McDonald's so that he can be the dispenser of um, um, economic, uh, what you call, patronage, you know, because if Cyril is the guy who's making sure that all these black entrepreneurs can own McDonald's and be franchisees, you know, and then they can win awards and become, you know, black leadership forum and whatever, sure. whatever, and their first business was this through Cyril, through BEE. Effectively, that's how you buy countries. <laughs> how to steal a country. Yeah, effectively. Exactly. That's exactly. How. Through Cyril. You steal the entire country through Cyril. Yeah. You know? Just on the topic of censorship, uh, can we talk about our friend Peno? Um, yeah. Him not being on Twitter and him joining Afri Forum. So he's not on Twitter for a different no, reason. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, and then he then trends when he's not there. For saying yeah, that no, he was always gonna get, he was always gonna get censored, and I and I told him about this, and I've been frank with him, you know what I mean, and and I've been honest with him that you know some of the things that you're saying, you know, you're saying a, a whole lot of things, and the thing is that you don't understand how many times you get reported, and then how many times like when people are now asked to give further evidence, you understand? So you said something about mass murders here. And then you're posting a picture of Hitler here, and then you're whatever, and then they're put, they're putting all of this data it's together. Portfolio of evidence. You understand? It's like you understand? Like come, they're looking at your file. They they just need to look at your profile to look at you and say what have you posted, right? And they put one, two, three. <laughs> no ways, bro. <laughs> We're taking you off Twitter. You. You're up to something. You understand? So they, they, they've got they've got valid reasons to take him off Twitter. Um, so, you know, he gave him those reasons and, and, and that's it. I mean, I was brought back to Twitter because the reasons why they took me off Twitter were not valid. I didn't say anything bad. The only reason is because I pissed off, you know, Jay-Z and he asked Jack Dorsey to silence me on Twitter. You understand? And they froze me for a year. I was permanently suspended just like, you know, and Donald Trump is permanently suspended as well, you know? They change the, the, the terms of service so they could permanently suspend someone. Because they needed to change the terms of service to t- suspend Donald Trump. And they changed them with my case. Because Jay-Z was the one who was asking them for uh, the, uh, um, the terms of service to be changed. You understand what I'm saying? The narrative on Jay-Z has never been so tarnished or changed other than when I explained what happened with Kanye's contracts. He was a black savior until then. Until then, we then we realize okay, Jay Z is a sellout. 
you know, he's selling, you know. And now when we see him in NFL and he's like, oh, whatever, Colin Kaepernick, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden now Rihanna, after boycotting the NFL, she's back. She's now celebrating. She's telling people she's nervous for a performance and stuff like that. Like, come on, we're not stupid. We're not dumb. Yeah. Back to Twitter and panel. So, like your ultimate verdict, of, do you agree with that censorship? I, I get what you're saying. You, you're arming the audience about you, their set of things. No, he needs saying. to censor himself. Like, he needs yeah. to learn from it. Like, yeah. yo, he, he must never come back to Twitter because of the things that, that he said. He, like, that's the punishment. He deserves that punishment. Yes, he earned it. Yeah, my stance, everyone knows that I don't agree with censorship one way or the other. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, because, of course, you can always... Uh, but can, what about a person? You. I understand that, but what about a person who's got a portfolio of evidence against him? Though yeah. that's what I'm trying to say is this guy's a repeat offender. He talks every day in his videos on 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 YouTube about how he's been banned on Facebook for ten days, or he's been banned for fourteen days, or he's still serving yeah. a sentence. <laughs> yeah, I did say when I spoke to him last that there's only so many times that you can be banned on Facebook before they completely ban you. Because I had done it before, like I was banned like four or five times. Then the actual profile. I uh, was banned. And you also said that you deserved it. Yes, I, I did. Because you were stealing. I was stealing content. You understand what um, I'm saying? So, I, was, I, was <laughs> so, I mean, this guy, he deserves it. I'm yes. sorry, he deserves it. Like on that, this guy thought he could, get a, he could get away with subdiffuge, with spreading Hitler propaganda. You know, incognito. He thought he could get away with it. And I said, bro, the thing is this, is that you're sending dog whistles. I said to this on to his platform, and I said, you need to apologize for this. Because I did confront him about mm. it. I said, dog, you're sending dog whistles. It's like, smart people can tell, dog. I can read between the lines. Like, dog, You're not saying, yo, I support Hitler, but you're saying I support Hitler. You are saying it, but you're not saying it. Yeah, my worry is the interpretation of speech uh, by Twitter. Um, I think it doesn't happen automatically. I think people must report you. I think you and I know that. Yes, and that, people will um, report in you. In the back end, people will report you. And people will keep My, reporting you. I think... Because you repeat offending. Do you believe that people report you, for example? Yes, all the time. And are you and worried then they joke, that you could uh, No, be but I, I'm, I don't tweet anything that's offensive or that can be flagged. I don't. I'm smart enough not to do that. So offense is taken like people decide to be offended by some of yes. the stuff that people say yes so how do, do you trust them enough to know that some of the things are new ones that you are saying um and that they're not overtly offensive but those are your charged opinions yes they know that because they make money from that they know that my opinions keep people on the app keep people engaged keep people commenting keep people angry they use me for that they know that they get value from that they know that if we don't have nota on on twitter People are not on Twitter. Why do you think they suspend Musa Kaula and then they find out that he's got a new account and they suspend that account yeah. and then they unsuspend it? They say, okay, yeah. let's let you start again. So you've learned your lesson now. Is he back now? He's back. He's got the, he's that other profile. I was speaking to him about that other profile. That profile is going to grow. It's yeah. fine. That one was near 300,000. This one is well, going to be back. I mean, if you're still using the same style. He's not. Uh, he's, he's, he's going into something completely different. Yeah, he's, 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 he's coming into YouTube now. And he's coming in via animation. And you know, animation has got other rules. South Park. Oh, yeah. yeah they have Ooh. different rules. So imagine That's an animated smart, Musa Kaula. Imagine if he is behind bars. And he's got access to his animators via voice notes. He's unstoppable. He's untouchable. You we understand what I'm saying? We shall, I'll, I'll, and he's monetizing. We'll see. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say is this, is that Musa Kaula is a monster that's been created. It's like, you know, if the people ignored him, he wouldn't be a monster. Yo, you can't unfame somebody. <laughs> yeah, you can't become unfamous. It's like, oh no, his Twitter account is gone. So now everyone forgets he exists. It's like the the the, the men in black where Will Smith just comes to you and flashes that thing. Yeah. And then <laughs> you forget what has happened before that moment. Everything that has happened before. No! No, no. What, what you've done is now you've created a whole entire entire legion of people that miss him. Yeah, but whatever, we'll see. Uh, no, I'm just saying, it will pass, he, he's it will got a fan base now. Of time. We shall see. He's got a fan base because, uh, dude, think about this. Like, there isn't such thing as a victimless crime, right? So think about this, right? When people commit, uh, commit gross corruption, like uh, if a Somizi is like the face of like a, a cookout, you understand? what i'm saying and then clean they have to try and cover it up so they get shims to sue me or whatever right clean and then i say okay fine okay fine you can sue me we'll take it to the court and everything else 
But on the court record, everything I say that's on the court record is on public record. You understand? The truth of the matter, the truth of the matter will also be on public record. If you're being investigated, if you're whatever, whatever the cover-up that you guys try and do, even if you try and trick the judicial system, even if you buy the first judge, whatever the case may be, you understand what I'm saying? The truth of the matter is still there. That's still political fodder for me to use any way which I choose. I choose because I pay for it. You understand what I'm saying? That, that fee that I get to pay, and when the judge says, okay, you are ordered to pay this amount of money and at these costs, and that's all that is put in the judgment. He doesn't say, we retract your statements. He doesn't say, you are barred from saying anything about this person anymore or anything else. Yeah. So I, then I think to myself, hold on, this judge is just saying, chief, pay for this, and then so you can say whatever you want. <laughs> Okay, clean. Uh, so it's not, is it not con continuation of slander if he was saying slander? It's not, uh, what is so it? If, that if he was it's claimed, just a judge. If, if he the case have was to go slander. through. He'd have to go through a whole process from start to finish. The problem is this, is that it's politically inconvenient for them to report about this thing. That's why they don't report about it in the city press. They report about it on the city press online. Because they can't put it in the newspaper. Because if they put it in the newspaper, that oh, yeah. I bought Shimza, the city press a few a few weeks. Ago. The, the, they don't Two put anything ago. about me and Shimza. Yeah. yeah, from time to time, I'm stupid enough to buy newspapers. Yeah, so they don't put anything about me because they know that it's going to backfire on Mamuluko Kubai, who was the head of that actual tourism body that did that whole entire cookout. And she's now trying to say, hey, we need more women, we need more young leaders inside the ANC and everything else, because she's trying to get herself a top six thing. Yeah. And guess who she's created as her biggest enemy? Me! Oh my God! That's the worst possible person that you could have on your case if you're trying to be squeaky clean. You understand? And there's another woman who's also in on the action. Guess who's that? Nomvula Mokonyane, the woman who bankrupted my father. Oh my God! Do you understand the level of political enemies that I have? My political opponents. Do you, do, do you understand that? Do you understand that the women that are prominent in the ANC, the, the ones that are most likely to put their hands up for top six positions outside of Lindy Sulu and NDZ have got their political careers in my hands right now. That's how it stands. I've got a court case where I've laid it out, plain and simple, the whole entire thing, you understand? Every single journalist will have to decide whether she's team to Mamina so she's protected or they're going to actually have to make her answer the questions of my court judgment and say, how is this person paying 200,000 rands for saying there is some corruption in a cookout that was hosted outside of the PFMA where the Public Service Commission is actually investigating that whole entire thing. How was it possible? How, how is that possible? You understand? How can anyone say that that, that statement is defamatory? Yeah. Because all the... There's an ongoing investigation. You understand? There's an ongoing investigation. And you're the one who's being investigated. Let's not forget about that. The Public Service Commission has to send questions. And if they've sent questions to Shimza which he's admitted in court, because I made him admit that in court. It's in my judgment. All the admissions he had to admit, you must remember that he had to lay out his case. I'm spending half a million rand for him to lay out his case, for me to bury him in those lies that he said under oath. I've got that on record. I paid for that, dog. I own that. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Do you know when I walk through the streets of Tembisa, you don't think I'm going to go through the streets of Tembisa. I'm, I'm going to put the biggest podcasting studios in every single restaurant that's not owned by Shimza. I just got a sponsorship. I can only mention it when I actually like finally announce it, but it's from an audio company. Mm -hmm. And they're going to give me just as much money as I'm paying in lawsuits to put podcasting studios in restaurants in the townships of Gauteng. And actually bring tourism to the township to do what this tourism department failed to do, to not do these cookouts with these freaking celebrities and everything else. You understand what I'm saying? 
and then create content out of that. And just imagine how many platforms are then created out of that. Imagine if people have now, they go to their local restaurant, Ekasi, because it's got a podcasting studio, they can do their podcast, they can try I've it out. been saying that the township needs its own voice in this podcasting space. I've been saying that for a very long time. I think suburban kids are killing the space. Like, um, they're dominant in the space. We need township kids to have an opportunity to podcast. At places that have generators, that have Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, if you were coming from a different country and you wanted to understand South Africa through South African podcasters, you would hear one viewpoint. Um, Model C, suburban kids telling you about what South Africa is. And if you're consuming um, and you're from the township... What do you want to hear? Yeah, you see, like, you are not necessarily represented. So what is the potential of the growth of podcasting if we can just get right the accessing of this top-class quality audio equipment to townships in centralized locations where the kids are usually there to just smoke hubbly? Yeah, and they do that even at taxi ranks. They just go there, they smoke cigarettes, and they're on Wi-Fi's. If you create hubs like that at safe spaces where they can record their podcasts, that would be dope. Yeah. Um, so you're paying Shimza? Yeah. No, we'll pay him. He needs the money. He needs it. He, ne- he needs it. He needs it. He needs it. They, they're trying everything they can to try and milk as much money. Like, uh, they're trying to, like, um, pretend as if the le- their legal fees were a lot more. Like, I, I don't know if you saw, it was reported in the City Press. Like I saw the link you shared from the City Press and I read it. Do you see that the, you the, the, the five days <coughs> that he's going Sorry. to be in court, that he was in court for the trial, yeah. cost 242000 That's how much his advocate is charging. But everything else that was done, the filing, the summons, and everything else, cost 40, what, 7000 So how is all the hard work that the black woman attorney worth only 47000 and then the white advocate that Shimza hired gets 242,000 rands for coming into court for five days and trying to speak English and not biting his tongue because, you know, he's a bit of a, a dick Afrikaner. Okay, so that's half a million to Shimza. Over, slightly, uh, no, closer. No, that's what he's demanding. Okay. That's, that's what they're demanding, but that's what we're saying, no... We'll have a look at that. So, you know, the what the court judgment is, what their legal fees is, they need to submit that and we need to agree to that. So it'll that's still a process. Okay. I'm um, going to go back to panel quickly. Your thoughts on Afriforum and the association? What's, His what's association it? with Afriforum? Yeah. Like, you know, he what? needs to, he needs to uh, 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 follow through with that, do his whole entire investigation with Afriforum. We'll, we'll see him on the other side when he, when he comes back. He'll mm-hmm. tell us how it is. As a no, I'm just man. saying you, what do you make of that? I think, we, like, I think I, I think can't wait I, for I, the content. I, talk, I, I, I want him to vlog as a as a black Africa as a as a black Afri forumer. Yeah, because when I talk to him, like uh, I'll have an opportunity to talk to him because we're friends. Yeah, I would ask him like, what what the hell is this about? No, it's uh, fine. Uh, like, whatever, listen, whatever. listen. When, people, think I think about? if Penwell is a threat, is a dangerous. Let me tell you something. Penwell is not a billionaire millionaire. You know, he's not that influential. Like, just in general, like seriously. Just in general, ne? he's got six kids, so he's got enough baby mama drama for a lifetime of not being able to, you know, just live out his full life as a man, you know. So, therefore, his potential is capped. So, don't look at him as a threat, right? Look at him as an opportunity. So, if this guy's going to go into Afri Forum and they're saying, oh, no, he's pandering to the whites and everything else, and he's going to be one of our guys that's inside there and that's going to get money out of these whites who are racist anyway, right? Who, if you're going out there, you'd have to be treated like shit. You know what I mean? You'd have to be that lucky. You understand? To get the money that has been taken from us, right? Through whatever, however smart they were. We need to be smart as well. So, like, Penwell, he must come through. He must bring back the bag. You know, he must make sure that the farmers love him and that he's able to redistribute whatever the, the patronage that they give him. I mean, like, already Rob Herself has given him some money, ne? Didn't they give him, like, yeah, th- I think like 40,000 conf- or something? It, it did confirm something about equipment. Yeah, they gave him, like, 40,000 to buy equipment. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. So that, that's a start. Get more money from these uh, white folk. You know, buy more equipment, upgrade whatever you're doing, grow and grow and grow because you can never do 
um, more harm to the black community than white people have already done. Number one. As a single black man, <laughs> especially. So now if the EFF is now going to now say, oh, Rob Herself, let's attack Rob Herself. Oh, he's got this black lackey that he's funding. Let's attack. Let's send our EFF Twitter trolls to now make Penwell trend and say, oh, we've always known this guy's a sellout and everything else. Come on, man. Penwell is harmless, dog. Why is Julius so threatened? He's threatened by Intlanta Lux. He made him more famous. He made him more famous with that confrontation. He now he's being threatened by Penwell. Don't make the mistake. Don't make that mistake. That's a, that's a dumb mistake to make. Why would you want to be challenged by Penwell? Penwell's smarter than you. We know that Floyd Chivambo is the smartest guy in the EFF. You understand? He's smart enough to allow Julius to do self-destructive things. Because he knows that he can never remove Julius. Julius is the firebrand. But he's the brains of the whole entire operation. Right? But if he's ever going to lead, ultimately, he'd need Julius to fall on his own sword. If there's one thing I can say about the panel situation, because you and I know him um, privately, is that I think South Africans are too quick to accept people as their leaders. I don't think Penwell raised his hand and said, I would like to lead you guys. He gave you a proposition uh, for a cult, perhaps, or a religion. It's called Penwellism. It's, it's, it, it's not a religion yet. Uh, whatever it is. Like, he gave you a proposition. Like every for religion starts as a cult. In, in an organization. Uh, but it didn't say you must sign up for a party. Is there a difference between a cult and the occult. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So when you say a cult, you're not saying a bad thing. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, that's, so I'm not that's worked right. out yeah, with I, the words. I, I I'm know. just saying, like, he never asked yeah. to be followed by South Africa for some reason. We always clamoring for leaders. Even you, you can be. Even you, if you are convincing enough, people can actually see you as yes, the leader. Exactly. Um, for some reason, mm. it's like we're suffering from some traumatic, post-traumatic stress, whatever. Um, if you, if, if you'd like to, that's why we put Siakulis on everything. Yeah, yeah, like for some reason we want leaders. Everyone like, is a leader. Siakulis is on every single billboard. Yeah, it's as if they, there's no other black men. Yeah, and 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 for me, we don't even vet people before we call them our leaders. I like Penel. He's very nice. Like I like Penel. He's pleasant to be around. Yeah, and we talk and we disagree on politics. He's a, he's a, he's a nice guy to argue with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fun. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, love people yeah. who don't get tired of arguing with me. Yeah, and he doesn't get tired of arguing with me. So I'm like, oh damn, I like that. Yeah, I I like him. Like I find it entertaining. I like arguing. Yeah, I, I, Penwell is a super, super nice gentleman. I disagree with him. I always, like, even the last episode, I was like, yo, why do we always have to arrive at a place where mass number of our people have to be Bulawa? Like, I, I don't know how we get there, you know what I'm saying? You see, but and that's I the call thing. him out on that, like, you know what I'm saying? But still, yeah. an hour after we recorded, we're still chopping it up and talking and laughing because he's a nice dude. That's the thing, is that he's never going to convince people that that's a good idea. Yeah. You understand? So, <laughs> I why mean, he's we... not. So, so my, that's my thing is that why would we now say, call him? Oh, he's a danger. That's exactly what they're doing to Kanye West. Uh, oh no, they get security, dude. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about he getting security. You can do no wrong in your eyes. Let me tell you something about getting security. I got security now after the Stogie T Let's incident. Let's break it down. I got security after the Stogie T incident. So now, my wife is performing at um at. Uh, what is you it? told me about your nails. Just show your nails a little Ponte bit. Ponteval. Oh yes, let me cut my nails actually. So my wife is performing at Ponteval. You know, and um, you've already cut your nails because they were longer. Though. Yeah, I, I have. Okay. But I keep a nail clipper in my car all the time. My wife put it there actually. So, um, so my wife is is there performing at Ponteval. So like, obviously the Stogie incident happened. Like, and she was out the country and she saw it on the internet. You know, and she was talking about how traumatized she was when she saw it on the internet. I'm thinking to myself, I'm the person that's being carried. But she wasn't there, though. I know. But women can be traumatized by seeing visual stuff. <laughs> hey, fine. I understand. Hey, dog. I know. I know. Yeah. It was traumatizing for her, okay, <laughs> to see that. So or maybe it's the love of seeing the person that she loves is being carried. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> So, uh, you know, this person is the same person who watched me get beaten up by cops and didn't do what I asked them to do. So, anyway. Um, so, then, um, now we go with the security. And, like, dude, after we go with the security the first time, we're at Ponteval, like, she's performing. It's a sold-out show. You know what I mean? Um, outdoor, like, packed to capacity. I mean, tickets were, like, 350 bucks. It's, like, 
husbands, wives, their kids, everybody's out there, you know, and she's out there. It's just her and her guitar. She's freaking killing the show, you know. We drive back with security, cool. Then, cool, now we've got the security thing. Okay, Kai, we've got a security detail. You need to now go with the driver. Okay, fine. I'm traveling around with the driver. <laughs> so these things are costly, by the way. Um, <laughs> you would know. You, you would know. Do you know, Kaukelo, if these things are costly? I also don't know. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. So these things are costly, by the way. So now i got the driver clean. Uh, is driving the VR, no clean. You pick up the security clean. We go to Matumani Live, you know. Maporisa, Matumani, yeah. Maporisa. Yeah, he's doing his first live performance with his band. You know what I mean? So, you know, when I, was I this? support him. This is, I think, around about November last year. Okay. So this is October last year to November last year. So this is like a year ago. Um. So 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 now, when we go to Matumani Live, the security is like, yo, man. <laughs> the problem is, I'm here to guard both of you, but the heat is on you. <laughs> so I actually need to guard you. We need to find somewhere to put your wife. <laughs> and you need to be the one that's guarded. So then, when we're on our way home, clean... Now we have to drop off the security, whatever. And I think that it translates then to her in her mind that actually, this nigga is more famous than me. And that's a problem. And then, and then, and then from there, and then, and then from there, we have to have a power struggle. Yeah. We have to have a power struggle. You need to be less famous. You need to stop trending. You need to stop whatever. You need to... Everything that you're doing, whether you're, you're on a political mission, doesn't matter what, whether what you're doing is good, whether you're actually stopping women from being raped or being sexually assaulted or mm. anything else with being taken advantage of, you know, in this couch casting culture that people always ask about and no one does anything about and you're actually doing something about it, you know? It doesn't matter that that's actually what you're doing and that's actually why people are opposing you and getting angry. It's making you so famous that you're more famous than me. You understand what I'm saying? And that is a problem. It, 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 it inspires a whole lot of jealousy in everybody around you. Because now, every single text that you get is about me. Every single, your family members, oh, your husband is trending, oh, this, 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 this. So, I'm every freaking way. I'm every freaking way. And guess where I'm not? Attending to you. Because everything that you're seeing is me attending to other things, right? And you feel like, oh, no. This man is not attending to me, you know. So the only way I can now punish him is to make sure that I'm the center of his attention. And the only way to do that is to remove myself from the equation. Throw up a tantrum, whatever the plan might be. Remember at the beginning of the year, I told you, I'm supposed to go to the States. The reason I'm supposed to go to the States is because my wife is supposed to be studying at Columbia University. Worked very hard to get her bursary to study there. Get an MBA at Columbia University, one of the most elite universities in the world. I worked very hard to do that. Um, but, you know, that would be too much of my plan going right and I'd have her right where I want her. <laughs> so, no, she can't have that. So, now she needs to throw her own tantrum. So, the power struggle then ensues. It's, it's, like, it's like one of those things. It's, it's like a sick power struggle. And then you realize that, Ish, damn it. Now we need to actually admit to ourselves that, you know... Uh, our relationship will always be a power play. And that's the exact situation that Kanye finds himself in. He gave those kids to Kim. He, their relationship will always be... A, she's got his kids. Like, she's got everything. You understand? I didn't give my wife my kids, so at least... Yo, dude, but at least I've given her marriage, and I haven't withdrawn that. And you need to understand that me... My neck is on the line because everything that I provide as a husband, I still need to provide. Because if I stop providing it, that's grounds for her to go to divorce court and say, hey, this guy has stopped paying for this. He stopped paying for this. Stopped paying for this. So she can gallivant, do whatever the fuck she wants. I need to pay for everything. Because if I don't, I pay for it in court. She's got that over me. Do you understand what I'm saying? And... It, it, if I get angry and say, oh, no, I want to file and whatever, whatever, then she pleads grounds in which she could get money out of me for that. 
You understand what I'm saying? Is that what you're ultimately trying to avoid, though? The ex- the what, I, what I'm trying to say is that she is aware that she's got me in a vice grip because of those things. She knows that this is the biggest wealth extractor that can ever ha- occur in my life. If ever I was going to lose any part of my wealth, a significant part of my wealth, the costliest thing for me would be a divorce. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's like a woman having a gun over your head. And she can do whatever she wants with that gun over your head because I've given her the power to do so. You understand? So that is exactly the power that you give to a woman when you have children with her, whether you marry her or not. You know, she can always say, hey, Coco Maweni, hey, SK Koso, you haven't paid pap health. You understand? And that will always make your kid disrespect you. You understand? And whether your kid is supposed to be grown and he's complaining that he was getting $6,700. Yo, 50 cents' kid is annoying me. But he will dis- he's still disrespecting 50. That's the thing about it. That and, kid and, is annoying And me. the only thing is this is like, and okay, 22. fine. You can disown me, but I'm your child and I will continue to disrespect you and you will have a child that disrespects you, that yeah. doesn't respect you. And doesn't matter. You can you travel old. the whole entire world. You can pop bottles wherever, yeah. but your son does not respect you. And he's 22, bro. I understand. But do you you understand that he's... And so it's mutually assured it's destruction. It's like, I drink poison so it kills my enemy. Yeah. That's exactly... So so they've got you in that vice grip. So once they've got you in that vice grip, you know, you need to play it like you're in that vice grip. There's nothing you can do. They've got you in that vice... What this woman is trying to say to you is this. Listen, I will threaten your net worth unless you do what I say. That's what my wife is saying to me. That's the ultimatum she gave me. And then I need to respond as in, oh, oh no, hey, hey, baby, okay, I'll do whatever you want. I'm not. Can I can I make an example with Jeff Bezos? Even though, of course, that's so far removed from normal I, life. But it's, it, like he, it's the same thing. Yeah, but he. She's divorced I, now. I, yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, even if there was a threat to. He didn't have a prenup. Yeah, like, even if there was a threat to a significant amount of his net worth, at some point he, ex- <laughs> he accepts his fate and he says, you know what? Chop my head off. Let me get over and done with. Like, and it did at some point. It was not nice, but you get it over and done with. And then she becomes the wealthiest woman in the world. And now and now another nigga is taking that net worth as well. Yeah, so what with can his do? divorce. Yeah, it, but it doesn't matter. Your net worth is being split up by another nigga. But who what, was fucking the bitch you gave your net worth to, dog? But oh, what can you do? Ah. Like you, you, you accept it. Oh, no, one. dog. You heard Kim Kardashian, how she was telling her grandmother, I was fucking in front of the, the fireplace. And I was thinking of you, grandma. Because you said, you know, I, 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 I'm not in love unless I, I have sex in front of, 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 of and I know you're going to bleep out the, the, the F word that I said earlier. So, you know, Kim Kardashian sells kink. Yeah. She sells kink. She's like, a, a, so basically we're not watching her having sex, right? We don't even know whether she had sex in front of the fireplace with Pete Davidson. It's part of the script for the reality show. They sell that. And then all of a sudden you, you're simping self can't help yourself you go to kim kardashian and instagram and then you jerk off for 30 minutes <laughs> why, why do you have this idea timeline. that we do that like you dudes uh, do that Af- Af- do that. african woman bro so beautiful no but like our woman doesn't she look like an african woman uh, in she, her body? well she tried she, she does our, she tried. And she's, the, she's she got tried that white she's the got the whiteness she's got the body and she's got the whiteness that makes her unattainable so she's got that unattainability and then she's talking kinky she's talking about bro, like, so me and pete guys we'd be having sex in front of the fireplace and i was thinking of you grandma yeah you I know don't, i don't know so don't you don't think it's a little is, bit weird that i'm having problem, sex it's, it's and before price. i'm having sex i'm thinking about my grandma and then the grandma says no i was once young too <laughs> and then when you're yeah. listening to that oh you just you are desiring her it's, it's for the me it doesn't of guys no, from the north do, no it does it's not my desire guys from the i'm a kanye fan like, so when i hear that i get angry that kanye the mother of kanye's children is saying this so that simping ass niggas are now gonna jerk off to her i'm like she's doing this to kanye like so he's accepted his fate because he married the kink. You know, yeah. he, he watched the uh, sex tape yeah, and he I told was about her, to say, I, I was, watched the sex tape. I was about to say, he, he knew he, what he, she he was. He knew what he was getting and he knew that she was playing with a very dangerous thing. If you're selling kink as a woman, dude, you're untouchable because men can't compete with that. Lula Cafe can't sell his, you know, his, his, his midi. He can't sell that. You understand what I'm saying? So Lula Cafe is a guy who was always looked at, oh, the women love him and everything else and now all of a sudden they see his midi and... 
he's gone. The luster that they had for him is gone. So as a man, once they see your news, it's like, you know, girls, they'll always try to tempt, guys, yo, send me your news. Oh, yo, I don't want it to be a one-way. As a man, you got everything to lose. You got everything to lose. Never send your news as a man. Never send your news unless you're sending them to someone who's got a lot to lose. Send them to Rihanna. You understand? She's got a lot to lose for having your news. She has no reason to post them. <laughs> she will lose more. You understand posting. what I'm saying? So that's my thing. It's yeah. like if ever my news were to leak, they'd be leaking from something that would have consequences for the woman. But other women don't have consequences. That's why a bad bitch, she leaks her news. There's no cons- negative consequences for that. Yeah. There's no negative consequences for Kim having a sex tape. And what does that tell every woman? It means that, okay, Kanyimbao, yes, Tina Kraus had your nudes, yes, right? And his wife then leaked them, and that made you more desirable. That, that, that put a bit of a price on your head. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. You've got everything to gain. From a sex tape leaking, uh, Tiwa Savage tried to do that. But you can't do that as a pop star. Imagine uh, Shade sex tape leaking. Then the luster. Yeah, she's, yo, my she, wife. You understand what I'm saying? She's so classy. Yeah, like, oh, we can't see Shade Because she's once so we've classy. seen it, you know, it leaves nothing for the imagination. Yeah. And that's why Instagram is a porn site. It's a porn site that leaves everything for the imagination. So it, it's much more lucrative. People are talking about, oh, people made 46 billion of 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 OnlyFans. How many how much money do you think was made of Instagram? I don't know. What? The amount of money that's made these girls when they're telling you that my girlfriend allowance is this much and this is much and this much where where's that money coming from? It's coming from Instagram. Where do these guys meet them? On Instagram. Yeah. The catalog is on Instagram. I still meet people back in the on day, the street. I don't understand people meeting people. Back in the day Instagram. I used to I used to go to Cape Town. I used to have friends who worked at modeling agencies. You know what I mean? So, therefore, I'd always hang around with models and stuff like that. That's why I used to date models, like, because I used to like, I used to look at the girls in the magazines, the fashion mags, and I used to like this girl. And I can meet her. You know what I mean? She probably lives in Cape Town, whatever. Let's, you know what I mean? Let's chill, you know? So, yeah. that's my thing. So, you know, th- that was my thing at a, at a certain point in time. So, now, all the models are in Instagram. I don't need to fly to Cape <laughs> I, all of them are there and I can see oh ice models and then ice models puts their catalog and then I follow and then clean I clean follow back clean oh a hey, hey, convo okay clean and then it's way cheaper to just meet someone from Tembisa and nah the thing is that the, a nigga like me right when a model this top is model, applicable in your world. no what I'm trying to say when a nigga like me right even you you've got Disky TV Disky Times you know what I mean they go to shop right they see oh damn that's your dick print. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm That's not that, I'm no, not I'm just that saying. I'm just saying. I know I, what you're saying, the, but I'm the, not that sophisticated. The, the, women are like, I they're on Instagram. That I see Dog, hold on. You, face, you, you must understand. To. Who makes the most money off Instagram? Yeah, obviously, women. Obviously, obviously. And they curate their pages. Yeah. These people know. Dog, let me tell you something. A woman taught me Instagram. How Instagram works. How to make money off of Instagram. How to curate your page. A woman taught me that. You understand? I was taught it by a woman who knows how to trust me. By not showing people like the girls on OnlyFans, they're not making money. There was a dude. If 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 OnlyFans was making money, Kim Kardashian would be on OnlyFans. Yeah, there's a finite number of times you need to see someone naked. Black before, China before you before you lose the interest. You, you understand know, you what see, I'm saying? You see someone naked enough times, like three or four times, it's like, okay, cool. I've and, seen then, and then you want to see them personally, physically. And that's yeah. the only way you can get money out of you. And then and then after that, you're just a hookup girl. Because we've seen everything. And, they, and guess what? The richest black man living on earth says that he got all of y'all's videos on Reddit. Imagine, you're not even attracting money from a guy who could give a dollar to every person on earth. <laughs> you can't even get a subscription on your OnlyFans from a guy who can afford to give a dollar to every living person on earth. Yeah. <laughs> the interesting he, thing he gets be... you for free. I'm just it's like because he's that smart. He didn't get a billion by being stupid. Yeah. I think the interesting thing to be said about this um whether it's uh, OnlyFans or Instagram is that in as much as women are being sold the idea of selling themselves on these platforms uh, even the the X-rated sites, mm-hmm. what are men, the men predominantly make but which more men? money. But the which men, men that the elite men who own these platforms. Yes, that's one thing. But which men platforms. spend their money on these things? The men who can't get pussy anyway. Mm. 
Think about it, dog. For me, I'm young, right? I'm 32 years old. I'm still young. You're young. You understand? <laughs> Let's just say, for the sake of being modest, we're relatively good looking. We don't look ugly. You, don't scare you me, I, I think I'm ugly. But no, 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 no. We don't scare people away. I'm just saying. We don't scare okay. people away. <laughs> You're right? We've got a decent amount of money to show someone a good time if they are our company, right? There's no reason why a woman is not hopping on that D without you having to spend a cent. I don't need to pay a woman. A, w- a woman would pay for my company. Baba Lamneno was complaining that Ino Morolong took me for lunch. Yes, because Ino Morolong knows that to have lunch with a, a freaking baby genius costs you money. She wants to, uh, she's like, okay, baby genius, can I buy you lunch to unlock a piece of your brain? <coughs> you know, so I can use that for my, ba- for, for my benefit. Just think about that. So you can be her pimp. No, not to, so I can teach her how to make money without being a pimp, like Baba Lomneno is. You understand what I'm saying? I, that's the thing. She's like, hold on. I'm like, listen, you're a woman. You can be forgiven. If a man was ever a pimp in his life, if there was ever an accusation, right? He's done forever. He's canceled forever. If you're, a, as a woman, you could say, I was a pimp. I sold these girls and everything else. You could write a book about it. You could be famous, right? And then you could say, I'm reformed. And you're forgiven. And you can yeah. make money. You could actually, literally, Kill the founder of Squatter Camp. Right? Kill him with a knife, stab him in his mother's house. In his own mother's house. And then say, damn, we should have not gone to the sands that night. What do you mean you should have not gone to the sands that night? Why didn't you just think I should have not stabbed him? This man had a music fucking video shoot to go to. I was supposed to pick him up. You understand what I'm saying? And then you get a 12-year sentence, serve six years of that, so half of a 12-year sentence, which is half of a life sentence. Because <laughs> you should have gotten life. Right? It was not in self-defense. The judge dismissed that completely. Right? You should have gotten life. You should have gotten 25 years. You got half of life, and then you served only half of that. <laughs> so you served a quarter of what you should have served for killing a man. You understand? You, a black man. And then you come out and then you want to do a documentary. And your documentary is probably going to sell. And you, you don't give a damn that his 20-year-old daughter, right, is not getting her fair share of her father's masters because Universal Music stole her father's music. They've got no contract with Flubber stating that they are allowed to stream his music. There was no streaming when Flubber... Uh, did his contract with EMI. Ngule versus Flabba. There was no streaming then. So if you're streaming that, just know that you're cheating Flabba's daughter out of her rightful money. And the only reason that is happening is because Flabba's friends, Squatter Camp, are not fighting to get his fair money. Slicker. Gabomo. Sold him out. Gabomo was the manager. Sold him out because Universal gave them money. Gave them their commission. And Flubber's family suffers. And then on Flubber's birthday, when this episode comes up, on Flubber's birthday, Monday, 17th of October, you know, then they're going to be posting pictures. Oh, let's celebrate Flubber. (laughs) Meanwhile, you're screwing over his daughter. They're still in that house where he got killed. They still stay in that house. They still live in that house where he died. Not because they love it or it's got sentimental value, but they, they can't afford to move even if they wanted to. Just imagine the indignity of it. My father died in this house. He was killed in this house. We didn't inherit enough money for us to buy ourselves another house so that we don't have to live in the house where my father lost his life. So I don't have to be confronted with the fact that every time I come back from school, this is where my father got killed. Yeah. It's my mother's house, by the way. Not even my father's house. Where his girlfriend killed I think the, towards the, the parole period, the qualification of a parole there was a family dialogue that was initiated as usual. Um, and I remember reading the mother. I remember that the mother, initially Flabber's mother, initially was so devastated that she wished for her to go to hell at the time. Yes. And then towards the tail end. Uh, no, she never, she never changed. She, no, no, no. Nothing ever changed. As she, she ex- after she accepted that there was no more that could be done than the application of the legal process which Mm. sentenced her right she did not want to now be a person who says oh the justice system cheated my son and everything else she said i have forgiven 
I have come so to a place that's where what I, I have. Say. She like, had at the, at the tail end yeah. in that uh, family. No, but no, no, the thing is, this, that's the very what dangerous. I, what I was reading. No, I'm, that's, I know, that's I know. That's, that's why I'm saying the media. The, way the I'm, media. I'm, I'm, the way you're phrasing it from the media, right? Yeah. Is what this girl when she went on to Mac G's podcast because I, I know you don't watch it, so you wouldn't know. When she went there, is like I've been forgiven. You have not been forgiven. The woman has forgiven that her son's life was taken away and that she did nothing to stop it. She's forgiven herself okay. for so, doing nothing to stop her so son's inter- life being that's taken in her home. I, I yeah. don't want to so argue because yeah, a man yeah. died, a black yeah. man died. I don't yes. want to so argue the semantics of it. Her son died. Yes, absolutely. And this is tragic. And she has forgiven that she was, she, she did she was say, in the house. She did specifically yeah. say that she is forgiven herself for her, allowing her. it to happen in her home. So, Umama Gaflapa, I think did say that she forgives her for what she did, you know, uh, and we can pull this up. I don't want us to argue the semantics of those words because I don't want us to play to the, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to interview that lady because of what I'm feeling about it. So that, my thing is this, is that that's the thing is that when the, the journalist writes in English and then they take translations and then it's a loose translation of, you understand? And it's like forgiveness. No, what she was alluding to it's not that she's forgiving this girl. Mm. The, the way in which she was saying it, she's not about forgiving the girl. You, you feel strongly about those because she that, explained that wording? In context, yes. I, I, because, was about, I was about to yes. ask, like, do you know something different from yeah, that? Because what I'm saying is this, is that I know that interview. Okay. It was a long interview. You understand what I'm saying? And I, I gathered what her sentiment was. For, but the questioning, obviously, of the journalist was to get, okay, do you forgive this woman? Yes or no? You understand what I'm saying? Mm. And now it's like, okay, I, yes, I forgive this woman. You understand? Because now you've forgiven yourself. You, you, what you actually mean is that I have forgiven myself for in my own home, my son's life was taken. And that is what devastated me. That's why I was not angry at this girl when I was in... I was angry at myself that how could that happen in my home as a mother? My son's life is taken inside my home. You understand what I'm saying? Like this. You know what I mean? And, 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 and the indignity of it all. That he died at home. You know? All of it. Th- th- that is what she has forgiven. And now for us to now take that, because the journalist contrived questioning you see, in for, a way for in me, which... For me to, be, to believe to something different would that. be for me to speak to her, like to understand so, the sentiment. Like if, so it, if I, I were to so understand can, the sentiment. Can, can, I, can I introduce yeah, you to like, for, I, 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 would, I would be happy. Okay, cool. I, I, would, I will. I, I, I think will. we can even interview yeah. her, even though I... You see, I have to relieve the pain of that woman again. But for for the purpose of this deadlock, I think for for we would rather hear it from the horse's mouth, yeah, but like properly. As to e- and and and, and and with someone who's asking whether to understand, yeah, not to like get from, the, from a place oh, she's of forgiven. Caring. Yeah, from a place of caring and empathy, I would understand her better. That's it. Um, yeah, that's I would it. be, so, I would be so very get happy that. because too. I mean, that's the thing is that when you ask the question. Right, and someone answers. Yeah, I know. I can I'm a journalist. Answer. I ask with the headline in mind. You understand? But I also, it's like me asking you, "Are you fine, bro?" Right, and then you say, "Yeah, no, I'm fine." And then I look at your expression. I take your words. Yeah. And I look at your expression. I'm not taking. The journalist is printing on paper. She's taking the words. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying I'm contextualizing it in that way because it's very easy for it to be like, oh no, she's forgiven um, this. No, the, the, you can't forgive something yeah. like that. I, w- I wonder then um, the purpose of this victim, because wh- what I understand is that having spoken to some prisoners as well um, and having consumed the Agenda Network, which, which speaks to prisoners, is that mm. there is a process of victim, family, offender dialogue mm. uh, when you are eligible for parole. And there mm. are conversations there um, where people forgive each other or they choose not to forgive each other. I wonder then no, the, the what di- would have The happened. dialogue is, if it's requested by the family, what they ask is that if they've got any objection to the person being yes, released on yes. parole. If there's no objection, then there's no other further process. There's no objection. So it's just, okay, there's no objection. So we could it. infer from her parole that the... the there was no objection. Yeah. They just, just didn't object. Dude. Which is not the same thing as saying we... Whether we, we object cons- or not, this was her words. It's not going to bring him back. Yeah. Wh- whatever happens to her is not going to bring him back. That's, what she, that's actually the point that I was making. Is that her resignation to the are forgiven was that nothing we say or do is going to bring him back to life. Yeah. She has resigned to the fact that she's accepted that he's gone and that's what she's forgiving. You understand? And, and, and that's it. It's not that she's forgiven the killer who is a killer who killed, who knew exactly what she was doing when she killed. It's not like she had a gun in her hand. She had a knife, dog. You actually have to stab someone 
and killed him. You know, it's not a scuffle. It's not a normal thing. And the dangerous things like, oh, it could happen to anybody. No, the things that you didn't watch the podcast because that was the thing that made me um, uh, 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 quiz. Can we, I can understand. Can I understand. We, can we speak about the bigger point then? Uh, no, um, I'm, ab- about us, the the podcasters, and the people we are able to interview and not interview. No, Maybe there's a bigger no, point to be said about no, that. No, no, no. Because everybody there's a lot of criticism. No, everybody needs to be interviewed. I agree. And, and, and I agree, I agree no, let that. me tell you why I'm saying this. Yeah. The way in which Mac did it, right, is very cringe because he was doing his best to make her feel as comfortable as possible. Which you usually, have to do. Usually the intention... Which w- is what you have to sitting, do. Yeah, when you're sitting here, yeah. I do not intend to make you walk out here and make you feel so uncomfortable. That, that oh, we don't, and regret, or that I call and say, ah, oh, please delete an, that an episode. Audience, yeah, like we don't have an audience that can, can have a viewing, a pleasant viewing experience. I don't want to invite people here to make them feel uncomfortable. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's nothing he can do. But at the same time, right? You can push though. Like you can always push he did. a little bit. He did. He said, I mean, so when you date a guy now, does he hide all the knives? You know, in his tongue and cheek way. Sure. And then he used the fact that Saul is going to now play it off with a pun. And as you can see now, the working dynamic, it seems like Saul has got his balance, eh? Have you noticed? Please don't say anything <laughs> else. Other no, than no, I'm serious. Yes, he's got, yes, he's got, his, yes. he's got, you got to give me my props, dog. You got to give me my props. Okay, you, gotta, well uh, you know, he's got his balance. I'm, he's looking uh, good on Kaya. He's looking good on the podcast. He understands his place. He's not overstretching himself. No he's more. pacing himself nicely. So they, they played it perfectly. The thing is that them playing it perfectly makes this killer un- very comfortable. And it's very uncomfortable as friends or people who care about Flabber or fans or anybody to watch the killer of someone we love, just be so comfortable because he, he was just too comfortable. And that just shows what a brilliant job those guys did. Yeah. What a brilliant job so what, to what, those what, guys. What because was the, the, the whole entire what was point, the about? it made her so comfortable that she exposed that she's got no remorse. Yeah. So what was the noise about? The noise was that people say, this girl's got no remorse. And they were just expressing that. And people are going to be angry. And they're going to say, yo, why are you giving her a platform? They're going to say whatever they say, but they're just expressing the anger. And this is the justified anger. And this is the anger that we need. Yes, they must feel outraged. Yeah. And it's a, it, it's a justified outrage. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So, we, so now we know whoever that documentary person is knows that nobody's going to support that documentary. <laughs> We're like, what? You're going to make money off of killing Flabba? <laughs> like... <laughs> It, it, it just showed the hypocrisy in the whole entire system. It's like, oh my God, is this what we've gotten to? Like, okay, now she can just come out and, 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 and make money. People are like, no, but Jube Jube, is, Jube Jube dude had a, his car rolled. Those kids were not supposed to fucking be there. We should be blaming the government, right, for the fact that kids walk outside of school and then are there in a place where they can be run over by cars who have a car accident. Doesn't matter what caused the car accident. Those kids were not supposed to be there in the first place. They wouldn't yeah. have been killed and had they been enough. walking. No, I'm just saying. And they wouldn't have been enough. killed. And no, they, that's the honest truth of the matter. And so enough. we cannot and compare and kids, and kids who got rolled on and by a, 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 a car in a car accident to a man who was stabbed with a knife and in and cold and blood. And that is completely different. Jub did not look into the eyes of those kids. He didn't even see them physically. You understand what I'm saying? He didn't. He didn't. Whether he was in a state of inebriety as well, whether Flabber and his girlfriend were drunk, you cannot say, oh, it's a drunk excuse. We cannot allow anyone to say, okay, we were drunk and, you know, and then I stabbed him. So, hey, man, it could happen to anybody. That's my thing, is that we're saying that if you were a drinker and you've got a lover and yeah. you guys both get drunk and then she stabs you and kills you, we need to forgive her because you guys were both drunk. Yeah, oh, but they were both drunk, so it can't be rape. Yeah, okay. This is, we... this is, this is the exact same it... thing that I said when Dimples... Uh, um, may so rest in peace alleged that you know uh, some girl took advantage of him and raped him because she refused to have an abortion yeah there will be so many blips in this episode but okay can we go back to the um, underlying point of how do we then approach this so my approach is very simple really I talk to the people I'm interested in talking to if there's a controversial uh, moment from it or if people are somewhat pro- protesting because of course this platform is going to get to 200,000 300,000 people, it will be very big uh, to a point where I can't really control what people say um, about these interviews. Um, for me, I talk to the people that I'm interested in speaking to and I, yeah. I take great responsibility in what I'm doing and I'm happy that you're giving me a different perspective with Mac that they actually did a good job. I, I Did I, a brilliant job. I didn't see that. Yeah, I, you, I, you don't watch, so yes, yeah. So I, I would not have seen that uh, as well. Like, How do you think we should approach this 
as practitioners in the media space. The same uh, with Egypt. We can't, we can't give everyone a platform. Let them expose themselves on a platform. Pl- 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 Let me tell you something what Rob Herself did very well. He proved that he'll never be liked by South Africans. I can't talk to I'm him. just saying, he went on the podcast with McG and everything else. That's a perfect uh, place where you can prove whether you're a likable person or you will never be liked. It's a, a perfect test. doesn't matter how many views you get when you're on a podcast and chill with McG. What matters is, do the chillers like you? That's what matters. Do they like you? Do the people like you? Do they resonate to who you are? And in that hour, an hour and a half, two hours, you expose who you are. People decide whether they like you or not. And the thing that he cannot shake off is that he's a beneficiary of white privilege. And white privilege has oppressed us as black people. So the majority of the country will never like him. doesn't matter what he could do. You understand what I'm saying? He could kiss 10 million babies. He could build a thousand hospitals. You'll say you you haven't built a million Mm. enough. He could build a thousand hospitals and we'll say you haven't built a million enough. Do you understand? So that's the thing. There's no pleasing. He has, he's never experienced struggle. There is an aspect of it where it's the, it's the normalization of billionaires. You see, so um, there's a point in the early 2000s where Bill Gates is being demonized. And, and, and then he... And guess and what? Then he goes and guess on a what Elon Musk is doing? So, so let, me, let me just finish this point. He goes on a campaign. He spends over 300 million um, to be in media platforms. And to he, make to people like him. his image, mm. right? But then COVID happens mm. and we see him for what he is. Mm-hmm. And we now, we are terrified when we see Bill Gates. And who is exposing him? You know? Elon Musk, another billionaire. Yeah. And guess what? We like Elon. Why? Because Twitter's well, shutting us down, Twitter's banning us, and he's going to free us when he buys it. He's using his billions to buy this Twitter. You're like, hey, Elon, fana, I'll change the Twitter by And he's like, okay, fine. He's, he's using his billions for the people. Think about it. From the kindness of his heart, without any nefarious intentions. Obviously, he wants to be liked. Why? Because, other, other, other because the difference between you going to heaven and going to hell is how you remember it. I always say that. And whether you believe in spirituality or not, hell is how you remember it. Hitler is in hell because we curse his name to this day. That's why he's in hell. He's burning in hell because when you say his name, you curse it. Conceptual hell. You understand? It doesn't matter. Anyone that says they love Hitler loses every opportunity. You understand? It's a black stain. You cannot post a picture of Hitler. You can't have a poster of Hitler in your home. You're a bad person because he's in hell. Conceptual hell. Not conceptual, like actual. Like Him, his, his the body. Construct. His body the is construct. Hell is the construct. Whatever. Hell is the construct. It's hell is that construct. Just like race is the construct. It, it, we live it. We feel that you are black. Well, he's not here to We feel that you're black. No, but when we look at your, your genome, you are just normal like any Caucasian. Yeah, yeah. Like Hitler is except Caucasians have got some Neanderthal. Ish, I don't even like saying Hitler too many times on this episode. Hey, yeah. It makes me nervous. But I'm just saying, but we're condemning him. So, so it, it's good. But he's it, not here to, to feel the condemn, condemnation. I get your point. He does. I is not here to, to feel it. What do you mean? You don't think that he wanted... After everything that he's done, no, he's not think to, about the achievements. To, yeah, Germany is no, the just, biggest. Wait, wait, wait. Germany is the biggest economy in Europe today, solely because of Adolf Hitler. Yes, right. I'm saying he's not he, here to he feel, saved but. he saved Germany from capitulation to the British Empire, mm. and the British Empire was defeated by Germany because they expanded too far, and then they had to super contract and sell sure. themselves to the Americans, and Germany then saved. It, it, not only did he say he saved socialism because right now what's happening is that germany is dependent on russian gas and oil their whole entire economy right okay no i'm serious no whatever you're saying so I, I, so 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 you need to understand that germany right was split in between from berlin right yeah, yeah. and then the one was was a communist block or socialist block mm. and the other side was a capitalist block right and this is the biggest economy in Europe. That's got the potential to be the biggest economy sure. in Europe, right? In terms of the land mass, the mineral resources, the manufacturing capacity and everything else. It's got much more potential than Britain has because Britain is much more smaller. It's an island. It's divided. You know, there's, and they can't claim the other territory. Northern Ireland, Ireland, whatever. You know what I mean? Um, uh, 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 Republic of Ireland, whatever. You know, they can't claim that. You know? So, this is a, is a challenge to these empires. And you must remember, these are empires. These are corporations. These are businesses. These are the, this is the f- uh, forty-six billion that um, is inherited by King Charles. You understand? I'm saying this is what we're talking about, and it's actually presided over by human beings who make decisions like you and me, who have to uh, decide. Oh, okay, this is what's I happening. I think arguing the same thing. I'm just saying, like on that tiny little point, he is not here 
to feel the humiliation of what i'm name. trying to say is this what i'm trying to say is this is that that economy right that economy is what's tilted the war between communism mm. and, capitalism. and capitalism okay sure you understand yes so but he, that's not the point I'm arguing. and and he was a socialist yes the nazis are a socialist power okay and what he, they were battling against the way in which capitalism was being expanded. They wanted a social capitalism. He wanted mm. a social capitalism. He wanted capitalism to work for the people, uh, the companies to work for the state, you know what I mean, for the fatherland, whatever, whatever. He wanted a, a nationalist socialist party. That's what the Nazi organization is, right? Now, the concept, the idea is what is being fought for. Mm -hmm. And the, the challenges to the idea are some of the biggest empires, America, Britain, whatever, in the world. And they're, fighting for a different opposing idea, right? And you need to know that this idea, right, will only be realized after I'm long dead anyway. Anyway. Any act that I do, but I will not... not no, hold it. You're not going to be there. He was never going to be there. Yeah. That's the thing. He was never going to be there. Now, wait, wait. When that day actually comes and socialism overcomes capitalism, mm. are they going to say Hitler was one of the greatest socialists? What, but what's the point? They're not. I and that's, he, he, so he did it all for nothing. So, so he's dead. And, and that's, the, that's the worst hell, dog. Let me tell you something about, about even if I don't make a, a billion, yeah. the stuff that I've done will be legendary 100 years from now. And like, I'll have that. And my name will be held up high. And I've got that pride. When I go down, when I, the day I'm dying, and I need to think, oh, do I need to fight to live another day so I can uh, you know, salvage my character and my reputation? I'll be like, no, nah, I've done enough. And I'm at peace with that. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm at peace with that. Yeah. For Hitler, think about it. I don't understand it. it. Like, I not, not understand it. I don't get it. Like, I, I wish sometimes I could die. I don't care what happens, like, who remembers me, how, whatever. I, I do not yeah. care. Like, from the bottom of my heart, I do not care. Okay, so you see, like, that's the thing. That I, I do you, not you, care you, for you, you don't come from empire-building roots. Yeah, whatever. Like, I don't care. No, but like, my thing, that my thing is this. You, you don't understand it. Is that... So to I told you, no, it's not about that. I told you at the beginning of this podcast, I was like, you said you want to grow up to be like your father, right? And I said, yes, that's what my grandfather told me. Yeah. So you need to understand that that way of living is a generational thing. I was told by my grandfather, this is how you need to live. Okay. You know, I was told by my father's father that this is how you're going to live. So you care to carry, people, dog, people I know each of my grandfather's names for 13 generations. I carry their names. Okay. With me. Uh, you, that's you a, need, that's, uh, like, different, that's right? my thing is that I'm, I'm not trying to diminish your way of thinking. I'm just yeah. saying we're so far apart in the way we yeah, understand sure. I things. Get it. I get it. It's like you would never, and I would never be able to explain it to you yeah, yeah. in a way in, that in a you way would, that understand. I would understand. Because I don't care to. Under, I would rather <laughs> die before understanding it. Like I don't care to. I don't care. Like I don't care how people remember <laughs> me tomorrow. I do dope shit and I create dope stuff, but I don't care. Dude, we sing I, songs about my grandfather from thirteen. Yeah, nah. Generations ago. Nah. I'm that, cool, that's man. how much he cared about how nah. he'll be remembered. That he made songs nah, <laughs> that 13 generations from to, now might see. I know, but that's how much he cared. <laughs> nah, man. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that's I, how much I, he cared. I see what you're saying. And that's the hell that Hitler has to be in. But he's but not experiencing it. He. <laughs> Is it like nothing is happening to him? Like it's not exper It's this trivial. Is the, what after, it, it, it's not trivial. It's trivial. It, it's not trivial. Like it's I would, not trivial. I pour me with because you pour, pour me okay. With why, did, why did why did why did why did Rhodes? Yeah. Why did Cecil John Rhodes have uh, Zambian Zimbabwe named after him as Rhodesia? Because he cared about what people thought about him after his death. He died in South Africa, That's and trivial. his bones were buried in Livingston in Zimbabwe. That's so true. No, I'm like, just saying in Rhodesia. Like life sorry. Goes on, like, it, yes, life, life but he goes cared. On, but life goes on immediately after you Benny die. Benny Bernardo, like. they care yeah, yeah. that their names are going to be said even now on this podcast, and that's they were living trivial. when. Nah, that's trivial. Like life goes on. It's not on, trivial. It matters. People eat food, and then it, they go. King on with Charles their life. is inheriting. A, a massive estate because someone thought about him before he was even a sperm in the dick. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, I get the point that you're saying, but still, that's... And that's why you're like, oh, King Charles, oh, how does he get to inherit so much? Because someone cared. Okay, all right. Uh, cared congratulations enough. to Chris... Chris is it and, still and alive? The, or he died? King Charles, the current king of England. This one, the Yes, one. the current king. Okay. The current king right. who owns so much land that stretches around the earth that the sun never sits on it. Do you understand that? That the sun is always shining on realms, on land that he owns, 24 hours a day. Okay. That's how much land he owns. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like <laughs> when you're driving to Durban and you're like, hey, there's a long fence. Hey, this guy owns all this land. No, it's like when you're flying around the earth and you're chasing the sun. And you're like, this guy owns all this land. Because <laughs> someone cared. And guess when they cared? In 1066, when they built that empire. That's when the, 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 the empire was established. And when are, when are we now? We're 44 years away from a thousand years. Okay. All right. Um, we need to wrap up at some point because I'm getting, I'm getting sweaty uh, with my influenza. Any more for any more uh, on your items? I've lost my train of thought as well. Do you have any other items that you want to cover? No, I think. We sh- why? Um, <coughs> sorry. Why, did, why, why did we want to talk about? Why, oh, we're talking about the cancellation of Kanye. Okay, let's talk about that. And how sorry. that how that is going to affect business? Um, yeah. Ka- Kanye is something pulling, happened Kanye to him. Is pulling, Ka- Kanye, bank, is doing, right? Kanye, Kanye is doing. What to, did he say to Adidas? What my wife is doing to me. Okay. So what did he say? Factually, what did he say? So that he never said a anything. Bank. He never said uh, anything. He never said anything. He said he threatened to say something. He said, I'm sleepy right now. <laughs> I'm sleepy right now. But tomorrow when I wake up, I'm going to say something about Jewish people. Okay? Mm-hmm. And I cannot be anti-Semitic because black people are the original Jews. Okay. So that's the what that he said. He threatened to say something. <laughs> well, within that threat. And he even said he in said. his threat that he cannot be anti-Semitic. Because black people are Jews and Jesus is a Jew as well. Yeah, in, 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 in well in their yes, world, yes. that's the what. The yes. black people are Jewish. Yeah. So uh, did they ban him from JP Morgan and Chase because he said that black people are Jews? It's possible. That that's their what. What did he say? That it's possible. Because that's that, the only thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> that, possible that that's their what. You understand what I'm saying? So now this guy told so, the world that black people are the original Jews. So what did they what did they do? They, so they, 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 they asked they him posted, to take all of his money they, out of the bank? Yes. Yo. And within a JP Morgan period, and Chase, yes. The biggest bank in America. The yeah, biggest bank. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Huh? So if he had like a billion there or half a half it a million. It doesn't matter. Yeezy. All Yeezy's bank accounts. Yeezy, yes, the I, I could see like the yes, corporation, yes, the, the yes, company. Yes, yes. They mentioned, oh my word. Yes. Jeez. You understand what I'm saying? And and they didn't do anything when he said like, white lives matter. Yeah, because they're using their social power to, to prove. And then you, they say they're only consequence. Two, you can say things about your people. They won't do anything. Tina, we will consequence. And then they brag about we are only 2.4% of the American population. Mm-hmm. How can we take such insults? You're only 2.4% of the American population. How can you have so much power? Yeah. How can you censure people's bank accounts, their businesses, move their corporations into other domiciles? Because that's what you're doing. You're saying, if you're JP Morgan, you're the biggest bank in New York. You're saying, you cannot bank in New York. You need to find another financial center to take your money. Because the Rothschilds own New York. And you also cannot take your money to London because the Rothschilds own that as well. And guess who was fighting the Rothschilds? Adolf Hitler. So what happens to your men now? So now as black people, as black people, we need to think that Adolf Hitler is our enemy, right? Because he exterminated a whole lot of white people, (laughs) right? Because blacks are not Jewish, right? That's what they're saying, right? Right? That's what you're saying inadvertently. If you if you're banning Kanye from saying that blacks are Jewish, then you are saying that Hitler killed Jews and Jews were exclusively white. And therefore you're saying that Hitler killed white people. So then if you're saying that Hitler Hitler only killed white people, why should we as black people have a problem with him? Because he's not King Leopold who massacred millions. Millions of Africans in Congo. More Africans in Congo than Jews in Europe. You understand what I'm saying? We must be more angry at Adolf Hitler. He must be so cancelled. You must burn him in hell to the point that your white rage spills over that Hitler now sanctifies you, gives you valor because you were able to defeat Hitler. And therefore, all the atrocities that you've committed against the African people, the people of the Americas, the people of Asia, are now erased. Because this person persecuted a minority that is powerful and influential. 
because they own the banks of Europe. Mm-hmm. Because the king of England gambled all his money in stocks, in tulips, and ran bankrupt and had to get bailed out. That's it. It's a financial crash, just like the, 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 the housing market crash, right? And then the banks had to bail out the king. The crown, the banks bailed out the crown, and that's how they owned. That's how the Bank of England was established and funded by the Rothschilds. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's not as easy as him finding another financial institution? So now we can never actually study who Hitler was actually fighting. That's actually what the case is, because he's been cancelled. He's in hell. He's burnt. He's banned. They banned Penwell for talking about Hitler too much. They banned Penwell. They said, yeah. So that even Nota, yeah, we see you also on podcasts with, with, with Penwell. We'll ban you too if yeah, you like, are celebrating that I, guy. I've lost hope for this episode. This thing that we're doing, <laughs> the number of times you're mentioning that name. I'm like, hey, no, I'm condemning it. We're burning him in hell. He must go to hell for killing um, uh, uh, the Jews. But so too must those who persecuted the Africans. I've lost And the people in the Americas. this episode. You understand? So too, those two must burn in hell. So too must Cecil John Rhodes burn in hell. That's why Rhodes must fall. Do you understand that? And if you understand that Rhodes must fall, right? I watched a, a, a podcast interview where they were interviewing Tandi Swamazwai and um, she released Belete, her album. Oh yeah, I have the CD inside the song. Yeah, I, I love that. And album. I told you that we beat that album for Album of the Year, the Summers. Oh yeah, congratulations. Yes. You, was that for Dakar 2? Yeah, Dakar 2. Oh, that, that you beat a very gangster album. I know. Congratulations. I know. I know. Congratulations. That's why I can go I and have, chill at Tennis Woman's wife's house. I, I beat have her. that album. Yeah. Well done. So, so well done. yeah, I earned my respect. Well done. So, Ooh, yeah. that's a gangster album. Yeah. And, you, oh, yes, I wanted to talk to you about when you spoke with her sister. Because <laughs> it was very weird. Because I actually had a conversation with her. Yeah, please continue speaking. Let me check that album. You want to. Okay. Anyway, so this Bellete album, and then Rude Boy Paul is, is saying in his, um, in his podcast that he does with uh, DJ Spoo, I don't know if you've caught it. That, you know, um, that album was made at the time where students were uprising and everything else. And that was part of the Fees Must Fall. And this artwork says nothing about Fees Must Fall. If you look at the Cuesta Dakar 2 artwork, we took Cecil John Rose's statue and removed it at UCT at mm. Jameson Hall. And we put a, a statue of Cuesta there. And we put it in a style that is Banksy. That artist who does protest art who yeah. you don't see. So he made like Banksy did a protest art. They removed the statue. Then Banksy did a protest art and put Questa there. Yeah, right. And then U- U- Uchi Gijela, she does use yeah. some of the I understand that. Yes, she did. Gijela. Yes. I know she does that. The song itself. Yeah. But what I'm talking about is that that song itself is not going to become like a big it, that's a song, it's an old song. Shout out to Wundu Dozo Makatini as well. Mm. Uh, she, 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 it's an old song, yes, so it's yes, a cover. She, she remade so, a yeah, I understand what I'm songs. saying. So what I'm saying is that we had the biggest song in the country. Yeah. We had the, we had the biggest pop stars in the country, the biggest rock stars, in, and the message that we're selling is Rhodes Must Fall. Empire Must Fall. You understand? That's the subliminal message that we're sending to this youth as well. And guess what? We're also standing in the Fees Must Fall marches with them. If you, there's a picture of me, a.k.a. Kid X, you understand? Kid X's car got crashed. You understand? We're standing in in there with the kids, understanding that we could use our privilege and the fact that these police officers can recognize us to ensure that they don't act too violently to these kids. Mm. That's how. Oh yeah, you know, you you brought this up uh, where you were trying to make an underlying point about the roads must fall and the cover. I'm talking about the the political agenda. I'm just talking about the political agenda of the art. You understand? We we had that in mind. And we knew that these statues are going to come down. We knew that these statues, the statues came down after this. After this. this. We're making this album in 2015. You understand what I'm saying? We knew that it was for that generation. We were performing this album at all these universities for that generation. Those were the people that were bankrolling our lifestyles. Those were the people that were coming to the nightclubs. Those were the people that come to the music festivals and yeah. everything else. These students were really in touch with that whole entire student culture. We knew their struggles because these are the bitches that we're sending airtime to, money to, as well. You yeah. understand? You wanted to make a point about Nsiki as well? So, no, when Nsiki was, was saying here, that, yeah. when, when Nsiki was saying the things that, you know, she said about me, like, you know, every village has its... I'm like, someone who's been demonized so much in public the one person 
ever who publicly who publicly defended you just publicly right yeah you then go out there and say oh yeah she was trying to sanitize himself and everything else i publicly defended you before i had any issues with my relationship with my wife or anything else it had nothing to do with me trying to sanitize myself for my image with my wife that was way before that you understand what i'm saying i publicly defended you before that and now you try to use a moment where you feel that you can now show some ascendancy over me you know what i mean to try and bring me down in in the worst way when all i've ever done is support you praise you defend you i'm the only person who's supported you praise you. what does that say about you to anyone who sees you, in cinema as well, but why is she coming after Nota, who is the guy who's always defended her and always said nice things to hold her up? And that just shows that you're not fit for this position, that you feel like, okay, I'm a spiritual leader and everything else, because you've got an ego. You feel threatened by a guy like Nota. That's the thing. You don't think that your voice can stand next to his voice. He can have a powerful voice. You can have a powerful voice. And that you need to com- you don't need to compete for the space. You, you can't compete against me in Sigma as well. You know, every single record that you released, you understand, has not sold as much as the records that I've released, dude. I'm at a, another level. The fact that I go and sit on podcasts and I sit next to people and everything else does not take away from who I am. I know who I am. You understand? It doesn't take away from the fact that Brenda Fassi hasn't done my numbers. You understand what I'm saying? That's not a, a light fact that I, I forget when I look and I'm sitting in front of Chico Twala and I know I've outsold him. I don't forget that. Oh, Chico is you know, a But either way, I've outsold him. Chico you know, but they just think about that. I look at him as, as a guy I've outsold. And you ah, think, and Chico that's my thing. And beast, why? Bro. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It, 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 just Chico think about and, that. And that, that but, combination but, with but, Fassi. But, but hold on. Think about me growing up idolizing that. Yes, and then yes. saying, one day I'm going to be up there myself. And then going up there and outselling these guys, dude. Just, just think about any room I'm in. In the South African industry, whether there's a Tandiso Mazwai in, Chiko Twala in, whatever, 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 I'm the most accomplished. It's, it's, you know what I mean? Now, because of my humility, and that, that's the thing is that when people say, I'm humble, you know, that's when you know that they're not humble. You don't see humble by someone saying they're humble. You see it in their actions, how they behave, how they treat other people. You understand? Who they give time to, if they give time to people. Do you understand? Say, because I do that, I understand that I also then open myself up to a little bit of disrespect because sometimes I give time to people who have not earned it, who have not, you know what I mean? And that can put me in situations where I'm now being disrespected or someone is taking advantage of my time. I felt this because like I was on an Instagram live interview and I remembered that this is why I don't do Instagram live interviews anymore. And also that's why I said when I was doing podcast interviews, I'd like to do those more because it takes a lot more to actually start a podcast, to have cameras up, to get lighting and to get mics and everything else. It takes a, so, so much effort to get to a certain it's level. It's expensive too. You understand? It's so expensive. So the barrier of entry means that the person that I'm sitting and giving time to has earned that time somewhat because they've made the time to actually open up a platform. You understand what I'm saying? So the person who can just access you on Instagram Live, they're not going to respect you. So like I had like a, a little screaming match. I just you know told some guy who I am because I was like, dog, you, you didn't earn having to have a conversation with me. You don't understand that to speak to someone at my level, if you're speaking to the top guy, if you're speaking to Clive Davis in the States, who do you have to speak to to get to Clive Davis? You have to speak to the receptionist at the building where they've got an office that's going to take you to the, the office where the company is, that's going to take you to the office where the director sits, that's going, to take you to, that's going to take you to a lady who's going to say, okay, here's the email address, send whatever, and we'll let you know um, when we can schedule a call for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the effort that you'd have to go to to speak to me. So now you don't have to go through that effort because social media has made it easy. You understand? You can access people. And so now also the level of respect that we have for accessing people also goes away. The level of respect that we have for yeah. music, the level of respect for anything that we consume because it's so easy. It's, yeah. so, it's so easily read, like, you know, it's readily available. And then they don't understand that. So they, then when you speak of certain things, people then say, but why is he saying this? Why is he bragging about himself? And, you know, uh, 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 it's not that. It's because I'm actually trying to contextualize and I know that's going to take a lot of time. So I need to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it Can in I so many different ways. on that, on the numbers thing? Mm. Can Cuesta say he has outsold Brenda Fassi? Yes. Shit. Zahara too. That's what, that, was our, that was our goal. I said, yo, yo I'm going to make sure that you outsell Zahara. When te- they were telling us, oh, this is how much Zahara sold, so I promised him, I said, yo, I'm go- I promised him. Oh I, he didn't make that statement. So he's that iconic then? Dude. Huh? I don't think of him like that. Dude, he's got the two best-selling songs in South African music history. You understand? The third best-selling song is Malaika Destiny. 
So Quest. Do you, do you understand when, when he's sitting with first. ASM? Hold on. When he's sitting with ASM, you just think about it like this. This is yeah, what yeah, proves yeah. it to you. Yeah. He's sitting at his house with his dogs. He's got two I dogs. I watched that episode with yeah. his daughter running around. He's sorry, bragging sorry, about. So I drop. Sorry, sorry, wait. E S E S A M is everything. Same music. You can watch them on so YouTube. So hold on. Just think about this. He talks about how he drops off his daughter at school every day. You don't even drop off your daughter because you refuse to buy a car. <laughs> yeah. Cuesta drops off his daughter at school <laughs> and he picks her up every single day. Dog. I don't have money for a car. It's not that you don't have money for a car. What I'm trying to tell you is that Cuesta, the rapper yeah, I'm from Kat Hong, yeah, yeah. from the same type of environment that you come from. Well, not the same because his mother was a teacher. So she worked for the state and his father was a teacher. So at least he came from a, a, a working class family. You understand? But from the hood, he lives in Ernie Els's estate. The reason why Ernie Els has that estate is because it was his great grandfather's land. They discovered it in his estate. And they said, oh, we've got this piece of land. And they put a golf course there. And now it's called Copper Leaf. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So he stays in that estate. He's got a house. You understand? He doesn't have to worry about paying a mortgage. You understand? He, he just has to worry about he, make sure that his daughter's on time for class every single day. He's got his two dogs. The one big dog, he's sitting there by the pool. He's having an interview in his double-story mansion. His wife is so far, she can't even hear what they're talking about because she has to be that far because that nigga's voice is so loud. It's annoying. You understand? He has to have such a big house that he has, he has to have a bedroom so far so that he's talking at night. His daughter can't hear him speaking. It, it, it's like a practicality thing. Like his daughter's bedroom needs to be so far away from him so that when he's talking in the night or he's laughing in the middle of the night, he doesn't wake her up. You understand what I'm saying? Now you need to be aff- able to afford that practicality. Yeah. How do you afford that practicality without Brenda Fassi's Zahara numbers? Yes. Because I remember the <laughs> Vulindela album was half a million. You understand what I'm sales. saying? And she's such an icon to us that you want. You can't imagine. Yeah, like I, I cannot imagine Questa being big. Now than imagine Brenda that Fassi. he he sampled Brenda Fassi on Spirit. Yeah, Zim Binda. Yes, that was a quarter of a million rand that was paid to Bongani Fassi. Oh my word. For that. Now, how do you afford that? You need to sell Brenda Fassi numbers so that you can have Brenda Fassi samples. You can pay a quarter of a million rand to have a save Zimbinda. Okay, can we expand on that a little bit more? Because I want people to understand this. When you say it, it sounds like an arrogant statement. But What? Practically. No, I'm, I'm, I'm even trying no, to... I'm, no, I'm asking you what? Myself. Like, yeah. yo, so are you saying... So Questa is the highest selling... Hip-hop artist of all time, yes. Or musician in South Africa of, of, of well, all time? Well, currently, yeah, yeah. Yeah, currently. Like what now. does that? What does in terms of his current his current albums, his current yeah no Lucky Dube has sold a million copies with an album that's the best selling and that's what we're chasing we're chasing that with Dakar too and we think we'll get there by twenty thirty. Okay, so it's possible that Questa will be the highest. Yeah, selling. Dakar two will be the highest selling um, South African album if it reaches a million before any other album does. Okay. Ooh. After after Lucky Dube. Oh uh, my word! So even the idea of. Lucky Dube is still was, the most streamed South African artist right now. Yeah, I, I like it. But he's dead. The, 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 and, he's, and he's got an Since international audience. Yeah. 15 he's years, he's been dead. Yeah. And he's still the most streamed South African he's artist. He's got an international audience. He's, he's a different kind of... Got a global audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm just so, yeah, trying to think that it changes, saying, before it, we it changes the, the conversation about who's the... Okay, there's the best rapper in terms of rapping, but... And he doesn't, Questa doesn't need to rap. That's the thing. Is that he doesn't need to rap. Why is he rapping? To buy another mansion. Because the, the one that Big Zulu lives in is, is not enough. Yeah, Kyle is not I'm just saying, but no, the thing is that it's true, dog. That's the, that's the worst thing that when I say it's right, it's true. I'm actually spitting the facts. When Questa lies about it, he's saying that because that's actually his artist. He owns 50% of the management company that manages Big Zulu. So Big Zulu runs around. And pays Questa's daughter school fees. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm it's, just saying. It's pugu pugu, no, no, We are cool, no, 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 no. But we're making content. Because I'm shying a spaghetti, no, no, no. Big Zulu knows exactly where I stay. He knows exactly where I live. <laughs> he can pull up to me anytime. He's got my phone numbers. He's a very big guy. I, I'm not going to resist him if he were to come to. Do you think he's going to just threaten me on podcast only? No, no, no. He's, cool, cool, cool. he's not the guy to mess with. But yeah, I wanted, that. I wanted to understand that, like to fathom it, like because uh, I don't look at. I know Questa and Dakar too sold, but then if they outsold Brenda Fassi, it's like yo, you actually start to look at them different. Dog. You, have, you have to lo- start Dog. looking at them with a little bit of more respect, mm. even though he's legendary. Brenda, Brenda 
every December Qu- she was Quest kicking is so ass. legendary. Quest is so legendary, right? My my wife organized the concert, right? And my wife's uh, mentor is Mami Von Chaka Chaka, whose husband was my childhood doctor, right? Um, so uh, <laughs> then uh, Mami Von Chaka Chaka, when we performed, she jumped on the stage to perform her favorite song, In Good. Mami Von Chaka Chaka, thank you, Mr. D. Her favorite song, yeah, South African song. It's a song I produced. You understand what I'm saying? So now, when I'm sitting next to disrespectful whoever, and I'm thinking to myself, you know what I mean? It's like I posted the other day, I was like, yo, my wife has spent more weeks at number one than AKA uh, Black Motion and DJ Zintli in this decade. You understand what I'm saying? More that's, wives at number one on the radio. That's difficult charts. to fathom. Yes, I know it's difficult to fathom. But you need to understand people are like, oh, your wife, or whatever, oh, she, her streams or whatever. My wife has got songs, has got a song with Oliver Mtukuzi and Huma Sigel. Right? And she's also got songs with Mami Von Chaka Chaka. You understand? She performs with Mami Von Chaka Chaka and Baba Mal. Oh. Yeah, understand what I'm saying? She is honored with uh, Tandeka. Uh, oh, PJ Powers. Right? By Moshito and gets an award. To honor, honorary woman. She's like African Innovators of the Year 2021. You know, which is an international award that she got in the States. Like, the, the thing is that, that's the thing is that, and it's difficult it's the, to fathom you, you can't you so you're thinking you, hold on hold on but notice wife he's not like she, she's not like a a, a rock star yeah because uh, zahara level we understood she, it when, when it happened exactly but, when it happened. but that's because zahara is also got the diva thing that is out there yeah. her diva is out there where my wife is diva is is psychopathic you know what i mean so yeah, no uh, it, 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 uh, it's make a the description point, make the point. no yeah. that's the point so <laughs> It's it's like Kim Kardashian's diviness. It's okay, where okay, Kim Kardashian okay, is saying, okay, okay. "My husband Aye. has been going through a lot, and as a family, yeah, we've God. tried everything." She'll post on her Instagram, and then basically she's telling the world, "My husband is crazy." Yeah, and now God. everywhere, yeah, the husband goes, he's he has to answer that he's crazy. His mental health is being questioned. Why? Where did people get his diagnosis? They got it from his wife's Instagram stories. And what is she? She's the most influential person on Instagram. The most influential person on Instagram said, "You have got mental health issues." So then, what's going to happen? You've got mental health issues. So the most influential person in my life is my wife. So if my wife said, hey, this guy's... A... She's, she's got that power. That took a turn quick. We were talking about her topping the charts. Um, I, I, and, I'm and, just and, saying and, that's the level. I know, like, you've, you've been saying that. Yeah. I don't want us to, like... To dwell uh, on that. Yeah. So I said that... So so when people are angry about that, and that's the thing, they don't oh, so, understand so the was, level so of prestige. So the statement is she spends more... She spent more time... time at number one. At number one than... AKA yes, because and I mean, she, she did... Jigizinto, um, oh, when she dropped it, I think it got to number one in its second week out. And then she also had Ungandi uh, Bulali with Nlovo Youth Choir, the guys who came second on Simon Cowell's America's oh, yeah, Got Talent. Or something. America's Got Talent. Oh, yeah. The guys who came second on America's Got Talent, right? My wife has got a husband who can call them and say, yo, please do a song with my wife for gender-based violence. And then we can make sure that we make the calls and then say, okay, SABC, use that as an anthem for your 16 days of activism. And then they make the call and then they tell Dineo Ranaka, right? Dineo Ranaka, you're going to interview Nota's wife. Yes, we know that you said nasty things about Nota and you said nasty things about Tapsi and Nota sanctioned you and got you a citation because of that and now you're going to interview his wife and this interview is going to be broadcast on every single SABC radio station and the song is going to be played on every single SABC radio station for 16 days and every you understand and you know she was at the charts at the top of the charts like that's an unbeatable it's like that's like cheat codes if you got a song that's played as an anthem and yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So, the the fact of the matter is that because of that as well, and her own single, she spent more we than than all of them combined. Then Zintle, then uh, Black Motion, and AKA combined. Yeah, which is not the same thing as saying quantifiably that they are. She's a better artist. It's than not. A, it's not the same. The same. I'm just saying that number one spot. The point that I was trying to make is that that number one spot on radio doesn't matter. It's inconsequential. The real number one spot that matters is the number one spot on the Apple Music chart. Now, I'm not going to tell not you how. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you how, but I've got a hand somewhere in earning off of the song that has stood at number one for the longest time this year in 2022. On Apple charts. On Apple Music. Um, I, let's not go into further. 
Okay. It, no, no, anyone I, I, I'm who knows? To speculate. At the, no, but at the end of the year, they announced which song was was number okay, one. I'm allowed to and speculate. So when you, you when you find out which one is the number one your song for the year, your, nah, it's not even uh, there. It's not hip hop. It's not hip hop. Okay. Obviously, it's not hip hop. Right, so it's, it's it's not hip hop. So when they talk about Blackie, oh, Blackie's done all these sli- streams and sales. Yes, he's doing that, right? But Blackie doesn't know what it is to sell eighty thousand albums like CDs. Because 80,000 CDs, dog, is 60 rand a CD, dog. Oh, yeah, that's a quite a commitment. No, 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 do that on your phone. That's quite You've got a, a phone, you've got a that's, phone. That's, calculator. That's quite a commitment. You, calculator, do that. Do that. 60,000 times... 60 times 80,000. Yeah, 60 rand times 80,000. Oh, that's substantial. How substantial? We'll see in a moment. I don't use a calculator frequently as it seems. <laughs> I got it, I got it. 60 rands times 80,000 that's 4.8 million do you understand what I'm saying that's a substantial amount so that's not what you get when you get a million streams when you get a million streams you only get 30,000 gross yeah no streams are <laughs> streams ain't shit so you, you get 24,000 yeah. when you get you get you understand what I'm saying you get 24,000 rands so just think about that so the difference <laughs> The difference between the magnitude of the accomplishments for the people who made music during the CD, the physical era, and everything else is completely different. So even if this artist is hot right now, you're not doing anywhere near the numbers that your legacy artists are. If you think about it like this, it's like, dog, um, Questa is like uh, Booga Love without a drug habit. Oh, Booga Love. Oh, Seriously, just, yeah. because he's articulate, oh, he speaks just, good yeah. English, he's loved by white brands, Mr. his Booga songs play shoes. at every Springbok game. The Springboks fill stadiums more than any other team in the country. Yeah. And every time they fill a stadium, they play Cuesta songs. You need to understand the magnitude. Plus Sister Petuna. You understand? E- either way, I earn off both. <laughs> you need to understand my magnitude then. <laughs> Asiva le lap. Asiva le fora palo. Asiva le fora palo. I'm struggling with you. Man. Yeah, shout out to Mr. Buga Two Shoes, my role model. That's yeah. the first artist I heard openly speaking about drugs, and I was 12 years old listening to his music. Yeah. Abo um, Panzola for life. I love Gabriel. I love you. He turned his life around, and if he can do it, a lot of other stars who are still dabbling, you know, because I tweeted the other day that that, that uh, there's 40, 477 uh, calories in a gram of cocaine. So if you see your favorite artist looking a little bit chubby, <laughs> <laughs> dead body. We'll see you later. We'll see you later. Thank you very much for watching us.